Hello, my name is Ben. And my name's Josh. And welcome back to FPL Graduates. Welcome back to another video where today we're going to be going through our teams. Another international break is now finally over. Let's get into some FPL action. Okay then, so yeah, let's get into my team first of all. Um, a green arrow, which seems absolutely years ago since we last spoke about FPL. The international break this time has felt very long. Um, still not out at the end of it. There's another one in November, so don't fear. We'll have, have another two weeks off back in then. Um, but yeah, getting into my team then. So we've got the double Arsenal defence of Raya and Gabriel. Obviously over that Leicester and Southampton fixtures, didn't get any points. I expect it to improve. Um, obviously Arsenal's defensive data, not as strong as last year, but they are still a really top defence. So yeah, for me, um, not too worried about them at the moment with that Bournemouth away fixture, despite Bournemouth at home being a decent attacking side. Rico Lewis is next, Wolves away. Really impressed with him uh, Well, in the game weeks that we just had. Um, obviously got that assist in their last game against Fulham, um, which got him a four-pointer, which weren't too bad. Um, and then we've got Diogo Dallo as well with Brentford at home. Obviously United not been the best prior to the international break. I'm hoping that that sort of break gives them enough time to sort of regroup and sort of sort out that defence because it's not been great although they did keep a clean sheet at Villa Park which is not a lot to be sniffed at um, considering they have turned over a lot of big teams there so yeah that's the defence Ben what's your thoughts? Yeah strong defence to be fair this week um, looking a lot stronger than the last couple of weeks um, the underlying data for Arsenal suggests that they've been a little bit unlucky not to keep clean sheets over those couple of easier fixtures that they've had obviously Rico Lewis so if he gets sort of free out of the next four starts then you'll be absolutely laughing and then uh, obviously Dallo United haven't been great I don't anticipate too much improvement just because we've been anticipating improvement since Ten Hag took over we've not <laughs> seen that as of yet so yeah all in all a fairly strong defence Okay then, so moving on to the midfield, um, it's one change from the last video that you guys would have saw. Um, I did bring in Phil Foden for Luis Diaz after hearing that he was going to be benched in game week seven. So he's the new addition to that midfield. Obviously he did blank in game week seven, um, but I thought he's looked pretty good since coming back from injury. Obviously De Bruyne is still out at the time of recording, so yeah, the minutes are pretty assured with him at the moment. Wolves away fixture is really decent. Defensively, Wolves have been pretty poor this season. They have had a lot of injuries though so I wouldn't say it's necessarily on on Gary O'Neill's part they've just got to play some some weak defenders back there the rest of the midfield we've got Bakayo Saka against Bournemouth away which I think is a good game um, obviously he picked up that knock during the international break but for me I think he should be fit and available I think Lee Carsley said that he, he was pushing to make the second game of the international break but they just didn't want to risk him so for me that sounds like he'll play against Bournemouth personally um, we never really get a good update from Arteta anyway so I think that's the best we've sort of got at this stage and Buemo again uh, really solid option United away as we've mentioned is not a bad fixture at all so happy to have him starting Rodgers with Fulham away again a decent fixture Fulham have conceded quite a few goals so far this season so I don't expect that change in any time soon and then we've got Semenyo probably the weakest part of the team um, Arsenal this week which isn't the best fixture but I'm just reluctant to move him on to anyone around that similar price tag so I just feel like he is probably the best of that bunch what's your thoughts on that midfield Ben? Yeah, decent midfield. And uh, like I said, I think Foden's due to sort of haul big, um, despite sort of the data being really limited and, and not seeing so many minutes so far. He is due sort of returns over the coming weeks. And I think he's going to come into his own as an FPL asset. And price rises will come quickly after that as well. So one a good one to invest in for the value over the next few weeks. Bukai Saka, yeah, I agree. I don't think there's going to be any issues with him playing this weekend if he is. He'll either play 90 or he won't play at all. Um, so that's when you just got to bear in mind for the bench. Um, and yeah, like I said, I agree with the sort of sentiment there with what you got. And Buemo has a good fixture against United away. So Menyo is a difficult one, but it is a tough hold um, for now. We'll just have to sort of take the the potential two-pointer that, that's coming your way. But if that does happen, it's highly likely you're going to get 12 from Raya and Gabriel. So that's not too bad. And yeah, like I said, the, the Villa boys are looking decent on the eye test and, and the stats for, for a couple of those guys looking decent as well. Um, so yeah, not too bad all in all. Okay then, and on to the forward line as it has been for a numerous amount of weeks now. It's Ollie Watkins. He's obviously away at Fulham. Um, been really impressed with him. Happy, happy owning him so far this season. He's been he's been super, super solid. Um, and yeah, like I say, that fixture for me does scream some goals for Villa. Hopefully, um, and then Erling Haaland is obviously on the armband. Obviously, with no Salah, 
Um, it's pretty obvious to go for Haaland at the moment. I know he's blanked twice in a row, but I think I don't even know if he has blanked three times in a row in his Premier League career so far. So, yeah, I don't see that happening necessarily at Molyneux at the weekend. What's your thoughts on that forward line, Ben? And would you make any changes with those bench options? Yeah, I mean, I, I probably wouldn't make any changes in, in your situation. You're looking fairly strong there. Um, there's not too much on the way of the, the bench that I'd sort of look to bring in. Um it's it's on the weaker side, but you're looking like you've sort of you've got options if needed, if injuries crop up, etc. So that's not the end of the world. But yeah, very strong sort of front line and, and liking the look and the setup of your team this week. Okay, so moving on into my team, I also have right and Gabriel as my Arsenal double up. As Josh said, like it's a, it's it was a decent move, but the outcome has just been unlucky for us so far that when when we moved to that double defence, the clean sheets dried up a little bit. I anticipate sort of the the trend of the clean sheets to return and and some good points coming from that double Arsenal defence. Despite the fixtures starting to toughen up for Arsenal, they're almost fixture proof in terms of that, um, especially from a defensive aspect. We've seen that over the last two seasons as well. We've got a really heavy investment into the defence in my team, and over the next few weeks, with the potential of a wild card in game week nine or twelve, I'll look to probably address that um, and sort of put less value into the defence because I've got realistically the most expensive back four that you could probably get in FPL at the moment. We've got Trent in there uh, against Chelsea at home. A tough fixture, um, and we'll, we'll say that because, you know, there's the obvious threat of Cole Palmer. But because I don't own Palmer, this has really high upside as a pick and really high potential to sort of really swing in my favour against those that do have Palmer and are bringing in Palmer this week. I just think for those that are bringing him in, this fixture isn't the best one to bring him in for because Liverpool defensively haven't looked the worst this season um, and Trent looks really dangerous. He's, he may only sort of have a limited amount of attacking returns so far. I think it's only one attacking return that he has yet so far, but the attacking day suggests that so many more returns are to come with him. And then Gvardio, again, a little bit of a disappointing one so far this season, but, you know, Wolves always a really good fixture. We've seen him get more and more advanced over the last few weeks um, in FPL and uh, on the pitch for City. So I'm hoping to see some attacking returns from him in the not too distant future. Josh, what's the thoughts on the defence Yeah, I definitely agree with your sentiment on all of those. Um, Trent, for me, he's interesting. It is going to be one of those cases of probably just riding out those tougher fixtures. He's had those clean sheets in you know the previous few games. It's now for him, his chance to get those attacking returns. Um, obviously, big chances created at five so far this season, which is still crazy for a defender but you probably expect a little bit more from him um, given his price point and what we've also seen from him in the past so that's probably my only criticism of him at the moment he needs to get those bigger chances created rather than just chances created and um, Gavardio for me I think is a fantastic pick we saw against Newcastle what he can do and what positions he takes up I think it's, it's quite crucial that like Jack Grealish plays on that side because when he does it does allow Gavardio to overlap and have those kind of runs that we saw against Newcastle so yeah for me if Grealish starts that makes Gvardio a much much better option okay so moving on into midfield and I'm pretty aware that my team this week isn't looking sort of as strong um, as Josh's potentially this week um, just because of the assets that I do have and not using that wild card yet Mohamed Salah's in there at the moment um, he's looked really strong and a, a, in my opinion a genuine sort of uh, in contention for captaincy just because of how sharp he's looked um, he's you know, looked really good. The record against uh, top six teams for Salah is good as well. And Buemo is in there, just like Josh. I think the Man United away fixture is going to be really good for him. And, and he's sort of almost picking up that talismanic figure now for Brentford since Tony's left. So I anticipate that trend continuing. Again, similar to Josh, Semenya is not one that I'm truly happy with with owning um, in, and, and starting at least in my team this week but I do have a couple of injuries on the bench so it's sort of forced my hand a little bit to play him it's not the end of the world though um, you know if if we do get sort of early sort of press conference news that one of my players on the bench is fit there could be a decision there to, to sort of maybe sub him out this week Rodgers and Smith Rowe rounds off the team it's a fairly sort of in balanced team at the moment in terms of sort of the squad structure um, which again over the next few weeks I can look to address um, with a potential wild card over the next four to five game weeks so I'm looking to address it it's worked well so far for me but we've seen for me over the last couple of weeks 
a couple of big rank drops. So we're down to maybe 400k in the world. Um, so doubled and more my rank last game week. So we're going to need to address that a little bit. But for now, Rodgers and Smith row, I do see goals in that game. So it's not the end of the world. Um, but let's see how it plays out. Josh, what's the thoughts there on the midfield? Yeah, you hit the nail on the head with the with the money spent in the defence. It probably could do with one of those guys being pushed a bit of money into that midfield. Um, I think Semenyo and Smith Rowe, obviously, you probably ideally want one or the other. Um, but Semenyo's fixtures, obviously, in the past have been really, really good. And he has rewarded owners for that for those good fixtures as well, let's not forget. So, yeah, I, I could see him, if you know Bournemouth are to score against Arsenal, it's a high probability that he will be involved because he's so talismanic to the way they attack. And likewise, if you had Jao Pedro this week, um, you know that's that's a fantastic asset to play on penalties. You know, really crucial to that Brighton team. So it's just a bit unlucky in terms of those injuries, and then also, you know, that sort of bears the squad structure, which isn't bad. You know, you've got a lot of assets. You could pretty much play all those bench players if you needed to. And then moving on to the strike force, we've got Erling Haaland, obviously on the captaincy. Wolves is a fantastic fixture. The third most XG conceded out of any team in the league. It's a no-brainer at the moment for, for me to captain Haaland. There's that conversation, as I said earlier, of the potential of the Salah captaincy, but like Josh said, I don't see three blanks in a row for Haaland. And Vardy, the reason we brought him in was four fixtures like these, so let's see if he can, can sort of continue the trend that he's done so far this season. Against the bottom half teams, his XGI has been phenomenal. Against the uh, top 10, it's not been great at all. So let's see if he can get some attacking returns. And like I said, on the bench, we've got Konza, Jao Pedro, who, you know, it's a, it's a tough one. If if Jao Pedro's fit, then genuinely sort of could bring him in for Semenyo. So let's see about that. Josh, what's the overall thoughts there on the team? Yeah, looking solid. Obviously, keeping an eye on those pressers come Friday. Um, Jao Pedro updates will be crucial because I think you know he's a fantastic asset for the price that he is um, and probably would start him ahead of someone like Semenyo this week. Jamie Vardy, as you mentioned, is a really nice differential to have, especially for this kind of fixture. You know, a week where Leicester and Southampton play each other, so there's not any real hard or easy fixtures to target. Um, so, yeah, that, that'll be a nice one. And obviously, if he does get anything, you're looking at a huge boost in rank from him just alone so yeah really nice team um, and good luck for this week mate okay then so that wraps up our game week eight team reveals we're finally back in action after a long long international break is what it's felt like we're happy to be back yeah we are indeed let the fpl fun commence it's not too long till we get into that period of crazy fpl action over the christmas period so let's uh look forward to that and as always please remember to like comment and subscribe to the fpl graduates i've been ben I've been Josh. And we'll see you guys next time. Have a good game week, everyone. So